I needed that rescue and nobody ever rescued me. I met him and again, I had just sent my ex-husband to prison for domestic violence, like a horrible situation. And so you're contrasting that with this kind, jolly Hawaiian shirt wearing man, you know, <laughs> meeting him, my mindset was my savior has come. Yeah. Here he is. And so now my shift went to, this is what love is. This is good. Give me more of it. And the second a blip of it would go away would put me into a scramble. Hello and welcome to another amazing episode of TMC, where we are here to help you take your relationships from, from surviving, surviving to thriving. thriving. If this is your first time joining us, go ahead and subscribe. Click the like button and turn on your notifications so you'll be notified each time we upload a video. Today on TMC, we have Chris and Jamie Bailey with From Dysfunction to Functional. TMC family. I'm Jamie. He's I'm Chris. Chris. We are Christian counselors and marriage coaches, and we run a practice called Expedition Marriage. And we have been married for 28 years. Mm -hmm, 29 this year. Yep, 29 yeah, so this year. Getting close. Yeah, we have three adult daughters and three little grandkids. Awesome. Oh, wow. So, how did you guys meet? <laughs> You're like in a karaoke bar. Wow. Well, it's a sports bar doing karaoke night. Yeah. Yes. Okay, somebody so enjoys somebody we, singing, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. He's the singer out of the two of us. So he was singing some Billy Joel and it was just a little irresistible. But yeah, we were a young couple mm -hmm. and I was actually, it was crazy. He's my second marriage. Okay. I have the whole teenage mom thing, married, a really horrible, you know, abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. And I had just gotten out of that like two weeks and I was out with a girlfriend and the, we were not believers at all. Mm -hmm. Neither no. one of us were out with a girlfriend and met him. And we pretty much did everything wrong everything wrong right out of the gate but god is good and and here we are but that was so rocky beginnings rocky beginnings but happy happy mi middle and hopefully a fantastic ending yeah praise god for his redemption yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> absolutely yes, yes, yes. absolutely that's our that's already encouraging jamie to someone mm -hmm. who it doesn't matter how you start you just keep working at it and work absolutely. at it and it can get better right yeah. right right so you all are Christian counselors, Christian marriage counselors. Tell us a little bit about that. How did you get into that? Okay. Well, we um, became believers in our late twenties mm -hmm. and um, right afterwards we got really involved with church. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we dove in feet first and I started reading everything I could um, on, on the Bible and, and Jesus and apologetics and just, just couldn't get enough of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and as part of getting involved with our church, um, we started working on some marriage mentoring. Mm -hmm. And so then as we continued down that road, we, it, it really kind of awakened more of a calling, at least on mm -hmm. my life, Jamie's got a little bit of a mm -hmm. different uh, explanation, but awakening, awakening a calling to work with couples mm -hmm. um, because the marriages were hurting in the church at mm -hmm. the, about the same pace yes. as they were in the world. And that didn't sit right with me at all. Mm -hmm. And so then, then I, so we continue down, but why don't you share yours and then we'll. Yeah. Cause it, it is different for me. You know, I grew up in a lot of dysfunction, you know, my family, there's divorce, adultery, addiction, like all the things you don't want in a family in mm -hmm. my family. And growing up, the struggle for me was going through all of it alone. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. bad enough going through it but not having any resources, anybody intervening, like nobody was helping me. And I am just a people helper by nature. And that experience, I remember, you know, in late middle school, just really desiring, I'm like, I want to be, I wanted to be a psychologist, mm. you know, and I end up as a counselor. So a little less schooling, but still the same heart. And I just didn't want anybody to go through anything alone. 
And so that was my passion. And so, and for me, you know, I mentioned the high, the high school um, or the teenage mom, but I also was a high school dropout. My mom withdrew me from school at 15. Mm -hmm. And so in order to go down this road, I needed to, I ended up homeschooling myself. I lived on my own at 16, Wow. homeschooled myself, took years, got my high school education, my diploma, then got my bachelor's and got my master's. And it was a struggle and I needed Jesus for that, for that journey. And so there I am, I, I finally got my degree as, as a counselor. And when we opened a private practice, we would see individuals. He always had the heart for marriages, but every individual that we were seeing came from a broken home. Mm. And eventually it had to become, we've got to get to the root of this problem. Mm -hmm. And I loved the people sitting before me as individuals, but we've got to stop the bleeding somehow, Yeah, you yeah. know, and, and that's when we both made the shift and that's where expedition marriage was born. It's like, oh. let's cast this net wider. Let's go on social media. Let's focus primarily on marriages, because if we can help keep families together and strengthen marriages, we can end a crisis of, you know, yeah. mental health issues and struggles and the derailing of so many people's lives. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of where our heart is in it and where we both came, came to it from. Yeah. There was a stat that was thrown out once that I, it stuck with me that for every 1%, we can mm -hmm. lower the divorce rate. It affects over a million children. Yeah. Jamie, you mentioned uh, dysfunction and mm -hmm. here's the thing that may be someone listening right now have a little dysfunction going on, right? And mm -hmm. they've been in dysfunction so long, it looks function. Mm -hmm. And I, I want you to, what does this dysfunction looks like? Because I, I think this is important for marriages, for a husband or a wife or a spouse, and not di them discrediting each other from getting mm -hmm. married, but really understanding, I believe that there's danger in the unknown. So what does that dysfunction looks like? Yeah, and dysfunction can look like a lot of things. I mean, you've got the obvious things of like adultery and abuse. Yeah. Those, those are things, but even abuse, unless it's physical, emotional abuse can be very confusing. Mm. And so that would be a clue. Like if you're, let's say a wife in a marriage and you're having these fights back and forth and you're being blamed for things all the time and there's gaslighting going on and you're just straight up confused mm. about, you know, what's going on. That's a sign. That's a big sign of dysfunction, lack of communication. Mm -hmm. If you can't talk you know, without it turning into a fight, or if you're walking on, you know, we talk about, you know, people who live in a home with eggshell floors mm. and you can't, you know, say anything you, and you're constantly worried. If I say this, they're going to get mad or they're going to be upset. That's a level of dysfunction. And so communication is mm -hmm. huge. If you have a lack of trust, if you can't trust your spouse, and that may be because they're untrustworthy, but it also may be because you have wounds mm. and you have triggers. And chances are, if you come from a dysfunctional home where you've been hurt, you're likely going to have some dysfunction in your marriage that you're repeating and not aware of. And so that can be a clue in itself is just having an up upbringing of dysfunction and where you have triggers. If you have triggers in your marriage, that's a symptom of dysfunction and it's it's not okay. And like you were saying, Cedric, you know, you kind of normalize yet the dysfunction and make it function. Yeah. It's just because it's what you're used to. Yeah. And what we're used to isn't always healthy or good. Mm -hmm. And so we have to really, really look at that. We talk about what's modeled matters. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that the verse about talking about training up a child on the way they should go yeah. is not just in church life, right? It, it's, it's the yeah. whole thing it, because we do normalize. Everything does mm -hmm. start to seem like that's the way it is, or that's the way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So when we move into a different areas of our lives, we just kind of carry that with us. And I was talking to uh, one couple that, that we were working with actually over in France, uh, which is really wild because the <laughs> internet, internet and all that. But anyway, point being is I'd ask them, so do you know what they call um, French food over in France? Mm -hmm. Food. <laughs> <laughs> they just yeah. they just call it food when it's over. Yeah. Because right? that's what's normal to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
for us, we would call it French bread and all that. They just go mm -hmm. call it bread over there. That makes sense. And to <laughs> attach it to the function and dysfunction, Jamie, when you were talking, I was thinking about that. Like some of us grow up in dysfunction and it was so normal to us that it, you know, we just, it just became functional. And now we're carrying it over and seeing it in our marriage. But I'm so glad that you gave us some clear examples of what dysfunction can look like. And I had a question as we were talking about that, when you're kind of working with couples and you begin to, um, talk about them or they begin to see some of the dysfunction that may be carrying over in their marriage. What is the first step or the first piece of advice you would give to them to addressing some of this dysfunction? Mm. For our first job as counselors is to instill hope, Yes, mm -hmm. you know, and, and to know like there is hope, there is redemption and change is possible, but creating that sense of awareness. And even if it's, you know, I don't have the skills, I don't know how to fix any of this, but even just looking at your life going, okay, this is not okay. And just being aware that there are problems here. So you can even identify what it is that you need to work on. And sometimes when we come from dysfunction, it can feel very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there, it, there's a lot of things to change. And you may look at that and go, oh my goodness, there's so many things wrong here. But it's start with one. Yeah. Start yeah. with one thing. And that one thing needs to also be you <laughs> and what you can control. Yeah. And it's very easy. It was so easy for us in the beginning of marriage. I, everything was his fault. Like it was <laughs> incredible, you know, like everything was his fault from my point of view. And I would really believe if he would just change this, <laughs> mm -hmm. then I would be better Then I would be okay. And you've got to change that perspective. I cannot control him. I am a big influence in his life. But that influence happens when I start working on me, yeah. when I start changing myself. And so having that mindset of, you know what, what can I control and what needs to change in me to get better, to make the situation mm -hmm. better? Yeah. And if I could go ahead and dovetail a little. Mm -hmm. So Jamie said we did a lot of things wrong and we did a lot of things wrong. <laughs> we weren't believers and we did bring a lot of that dysfunction into our own relationship. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we did have a lot of patterns that were not mm. healthy. And uh, Jamie was, you know, as she was saying, if I, she was looking to me to just fix or change things. <laughs> um, and I was actually a highly pleasing person mm -hmm. or people pleaser. And so I was trying to accommodate any way I could. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and so it just, it fed the dysfunction yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, even more. And it really wasn't until I had recognized you know, well, we, we became saved. That was, that was mm -hmm. huge. That helped. But then, <laughs> <laughs> but then I recognized my worth and also what, what God was calling for me. I recognized what he mm -hmm. was, you know, giving to me, how, what he said that, you know, my value was, and I didn't have to seek it out by yeah. pleasing Jamie and getting mm -hmm. her approval. Wow. Well, then I was able to actually to instill some boundaries. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I was actually able to put some loving boundaries into place and that mm -hmm. helped you know, change the dynamics for the better. Yes, it did. Wow, <laughs> wow, wow, wow. This is good. I already have a name for the podcast today. It's going from dysfunction to function. And I want us to kind of stay in this vein, maybe stepping back just a little bit, right? Uh, pointing out something, some type of dysfunction or other dysfunction that, that you guys, Chris, Jamie, both of you guys had and you dealt with. And how did you navigate through those moments and how did you overcome it? Okay. Well, and I think, you know, to follow up and to add more detail into what he's sharing, okay. I came in needing, I waited my whole life for a savior. Mm -hmm. I waited, like, you know, I was sharing about what led me to become a counselor. It's like, I needed that rescue and nobody ever rescued me. I met him. And again, I had just sent my ex-husband to prison for domestic violence, like a horrible situation. And so you're contrasting that with this kind, jolly Hawaiian shirt wearing man, you know, <laughs> this happened in middle age. It's yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and meeting him, my mindset was my savior has come yeah. here. He is. And so now my shift went to this is, and I didn't intentionally choose. I didn't think like, Oh, this is it. 
it's just the way he made me feel. I'm like, yeah. wow, this is what love is. This is good. Give me more of it. And the second a blip of it would go away, would put me into a scramble. And I would set him up. It's like, okay, you got to prove it again, prove it again. And then before you know it, I'm unintentionally, but emotionally, intentionally starting fights mm -hmm. because I needed him to stay in the game. And if he doesn't leave when I'm at my worst, then, okay, I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm good. And so I was always always testing him again, not intentionally. And mm -hmm. he was set up his, his personality, his own issues and all that to be that pleaser. And so he loved living on the pedestal at first, oh. but this is a short term game because yes. he is a mere man yeah. and he mm -hmm. is not Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He yeah. is not Jesus. And I was making him try to become Jesus. And that's mm -hmm. not who he is. I was giving him a job to do that is impossible mm -mm. to do. I'll and so that way. it would amp me up more. And then he would just try and try and try to please me more. Mm -hmm. And he was getting exhausted, getting exhausted in it. And, and resentful, quietly, oh, wow. quietly resentful. Yes. And so we would mm -hmm. have these times of these fights or something would happen. And then all of a sudden my kind man, who's the savior in this situation would blow up out of nowhere mm. because you can't stuff everything down. Yeah. You know, that, that doesn't work. They say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It doesn't work. And then it would come all out. And then we're in these knockdown drag out, you know, verbal fights. And I think the biggest changes came when we both individually started working on ourselves. Yes. We mm -hmm. both had two individual relationships with the Lord mm -hmm. and started going, what do you want me to change? What do you want me to do differently? Mm -hmm. And asking God to highlight, like you talk about when you don't know what dysfunction is, you can ask the Lord to show you. Yes. Yes. you know, it's like, light it up, Lord. Let me yes. see yes. what it is. You put it on the table. And God was so gracious to do that in my life. Cause I had a lot of traumas and a lot of stuff and one at a time here it is on the table and it'd be like, okay, I'm good. Nope. Here's another one, Jamie. <laughs> nope. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. And it was so hard. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, that just because part of that is, you know, learning what love is, mm -hmm. you know, one of the th aspects I learned is that love is kind, not mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. I realized mm -hmm. I had been being nice and not mm -hmm. kind mm -hmm. and to, Jeez. I was saying yes. So, so that way, you know, JB would be happy and she wouldn't get upset or, you know, you know, you know, Oh, you want this or you want me to do that? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And it if, wasn't helpful to me. No. Cause if I say no, you might get upset. I might. That she didn't necessarily <laughs> or it might get turn upset. into a monster apparently. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you know, look, it's, it's why we don't just, you know, give our kids, you know, anything they want yeah. in the store. Right. You know, mm -hmm. or they'll throw a fit. Well, it's not helpful to them when we grow mm -hmm. up. We just get more sophisticated. It, yeah. it doesn't yeah. really go away if you still feed wow. that behavior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We get good at what we practice, mm -hmm. but the problem is we tend to practice the wrong things yeah. and get really Ooh. good at them. Oh yeah. And I was absolutely doing that. And so I was never giving Jamie the opportunity to practice getting over bad oh. things. Yeah. That, oh my goodness. You, mm -hmm. I don't even know. You guys have given <laughs> so much. So and many nuggets. I mean, I, I think it's great that you have painted the picture and shared your authenticity, your truth, that you had two different ways of thinking. Two people had to work on themselves individually. J uh, Chris, I love what you just said. We get better at what we practice. We just can't be practicing the wrong thing because then we're going to get better at the wrong stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it, that is, that's just, that's a, that's a nugget right there. I guess I wouldn't have thought it to that extent, you know, right? Because there's we love to think that it would be awesome to have a spouse that just give me what I want. No. It'd be <laughs> awesome to have a spouse that's always saying yes, but it's not because it's mm -hmm. not allowing you to process what you need to process. Yeah. And then it's building something in, inside of them yeah. because Chris, you said silently becoming resentful. And those are the things that show up when that explosion happens. I mean, oh my God, this this is just, whoa. Yeah, this is good. So many ways I, I was going to say, because this uh, just, I mean, you guys shared and opened up so much because I, I promise you I'm stuck here because 
Chris, you said you were naturally, you know, the pleaser. And Jamie was like, I need that. I need it. And it's like, when you were talking, I'm like, oh my God, I've never even thought how that could be detrimental to a relationship. I, and I'm sure anybody that would hear would not think like, you know, again, like I said, your spouse is giving you everything you want. You don't think that that would be detrimental to a relationship. As you work with couples in expedition marriage, as you work with couples, you've talked a little bit about different avenues. What is one of the greatest struggles that you see couples struggling with today? Mm. My, I guess, view is is the patterns of hurt that couples get stuck mm-hmm. in, um, because of being, you know, pleasers mm-hmm. and and other things that will contribute. That we're relational creatures. We're, we're created for mm-hmm. relation, and whenever we feel like there's a break in relationship, it's surprising the patterns, how predictable those patterns mm-hmm. will be, mm-hmm. and people get stuck in them and they don't know why they're stuck in them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the brain loves patterns and then they, they get, find out they're getting hurt from that. And they, you know, then they get back in it again and they get hurt. And eventually over time, they start getting helpless because mm-hmm. they don't know why that's happening. They don't know how to get out. And then they start becoming hopeless that, you know what, this isn't going to ever change. And so when the next mm-hmm. argument starts, well, I know where this is going. So let's just blow up right away. Or, Mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're starting, you know, the, it seems like it's turning South at night, you know, and and we're already laying in bed and like, you know what, I'll just go sleep on the couch Mm -hmm. because I know where it's going to go. And so then we stop trying to work on our relationship again. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and I would add to that. um, There's, you know, we have big situations like adultery and addiction, things like that. But aside from that, you know, I think pride is what plays a major role mm-hmm. in the problems of many marriages. And and it's that lack of, you know, having that humility that says, you know what, I got stuff too. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like, it's not just about my spouse's flaws. I got stuff too. And just mm-hmm. really learning how to be humble and know that, you know what, I may not always be right. Mm-hmm. And in addition to that, it doesn't even matter. If I am or not. And we get, I mean, Jesus, how he demonstrated all Mm. the ways he could demonstrate his love for us. He chose sacrifice. Yes. Mm. He went to that cross and laid down his life sacrificially. Mm. That's the love we're called to display in our marriage. Mm -hmm. And that's what couples struggle with. They want one another to change. It becomes instead of what can I give you? And it, and it becomes, what can you give me? Mm-hmm. And that's, that's where we start getting into trouble is when we think we've arrived and we don't need to change, but they do. And when we're not willing to do, because the marriages that work best are the marriages that you let God have the say in your marriage yes. instead mm-hmm. of your feelings, yeah. instead of your own thoughts and your Come own on. opinions, but mm-hmm. it's what does God call me to? And if you look at, I mean, the most basic things, the fruit of the spirit, mm-hmm. like yeah. start there, yeah. start there, uh, apply those things, be more patient with yourself or with your spouse, be more self-controlled, love them sacrificially, kindness, have more joy. Those are the things that God commands that actually make our marriage work. But mm-hmm. instead of fixing our eyes on what God calls us to, we fix our eyes on what we want. Mm-hmm. And that's where marriages go, go astray. Yeah. And I just, because it made me think of something because we feel that, you know, that because God's relational, that all of the commands that talk about mm-hmm. how we're to treat other, other people, mm-hmm. you know, in our relationships should start in our first and primary ministry, mm-hmm. which is our marriage. marriage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. when God says to, you know, love others as I've loved you or mm-hmm. to be patient mm-hmm. or in to all, forgive, yeah, forgive in all humility, consider others more than yourselves, mm-hmm. you know, those kind of things, it should start with us yeah. mm-hmm. yes. before anybody else. And that's yes. hard. And it's hard. <laughs> Usually we don't think that we think, mm-hmm. oh, that's, that's, that's something I do for other people, mm-hmm. not for the person that I sit and, and lay next to. Mm-hmm. Amen. This is good. Start at home. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's really interesting because oftentimes in relationships with a husband and a wife, that's a big issue. You know, the husband or the wife can treat everyone good, can go to church and mm-hmm. can be the best usher, the best mm-hmm. greeter, 
but then go home and the word spouse. Mm. And I, I, I think this is a moment for us to redirect who we are as Christians and making sure we're starting at home first, making sure our spouse and our children are getting the best versions of us before the world even get it. I, I want, want you guys to um, encourage mm-hmm. someone that may be mm-hmm. going through dealing with this function and they feel like, you know what? It's nothing I can do. I've been trying and I can't do it. It's hard and I want to give up. And I gave up before I threw in the towel. I made mistakes. I would draw and I went back and I went forward and I went back and I went forward and I back. I want you to speak to that individual that just worn out and say, you know what? I don't even want to move. I'm just stuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, like you're mentioning, like they're trying so hard and they're doing all this. That's almost, I don't want to say mistake number one, but kind of, mm. because it, it's that's doing it in our own strength. If you're worn out, if you're tired, you're relying on your own strength and that mm-hmm. is never going to be enough. And mm-hmm. so it really is looking to the Lord going, I am tired. I can't do this. I need you to help me. Mm-hmm. with this and and you turn heavily to prayer yeah relationship with the holy spirit that lives inside of you and going mm-hmm. okay you got to help me right now you know cuz i'm about I did to lose that all it. sufficient grace <laughs> yes and so it's really an act of surrender of mm-hmm. knowing you know what i can't do this this is bigger than me and then instead of so much striving you look to the holy spirit you look for the lord's guidance and one mm-hmm. step at a time Keep heart, mm-hmm. right? You know, God's for your marriage. God's for mm-hmm. marriages. Um, and, and so, and but we are being asked to do supernatural things. Us mere mortals, right? You know, just we will burn mm-hmm. out if we because we don't have the strength to do supernatural things. We mm-hmm. need the Holy Spirit. We need to be in Christ. We need to remain in Him so, so that way we can bear the fruit that He wants mm-hmm. us to bear. But we also have to be willing to do the things he asked us yeah, to do. There it is. Despite, yeah, <laughs> despite what he necessary, what we, like you said before, how we feel about it. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously we're not talking about abuse and those, those mm-hmm, kind of, mm-hmm. you know, severe situations, but you know, when, when I feel like I want to get my way or, or want to mm-hmm. be right, or, or even here's something common. I want to be heard. You, mm-hmm. you need to listen to me. And I, well, you know what? I'll go back to that, that other verse and all humility. I need to consider others more than myself. I need mm. to step back and I need to be humble and I need to consider. I need to listen you and I need mm-hmm. to listen. Yeah. Right. I need to, t- to start to have that self-control that God gives us mm-hmm. as a fruit of the spirit. We, yeah. we, mm-hmm. we can't say we don't have it. We just, yeah. We're just not exercising it. Right. Yeah. And that's the thing when we Uh, take God's word and not just be hearers of it Mm -hmm. and be deceived, but we do what it says. Your marriage is going to work. Yes, Like that's going to work out. Mm -hmm. And so we just do what he tells us to do. And you can have that assurance that his plan, his will is going to unfold in your life. But that stuff is hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard. And we need to not be afraid of hard things. And that's something we tell couples all the time is it's not the problems in your life or in your marriage that will take you out. It's what you do with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's what you do with them. Are you going to take them and fold and say, this is too much, too heavy. I just need to find somebody better than this person I married. We're incompatible. He's not my soulmate, you know, or are you going to invest in that, trust God in it and figure out the solution Mm -hmm. and do the work it takes to get out of that. So when you follow what the Lord says all throughout scripture, all kinds of commands in there to do, it's going to work out. It's going to work out. And that's something we can trust. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, Chris and Jamie, we have enjoyed our time with you yes, guys. Amazing. And what we want to do before mm-hmm. we leave, we have to do this. Please, please, please tell the TMC listeners how they can connect with you all. All right. The best place to go is right to our website, which is expeditionmarriage.org. 
you can find all the links we to our podcast. Everything we, we offer is all at expeditionmarriage.org. Lots of free resources. On behalf of the TMC community, we want to thank you both so very much for taking time out of your busy schedule and adding value to us all. It was well, our pleasure. Thanks so much. So we want to thank you for joining us today on TMC. Looking forward to hanging out with you again on next week as we continue to help you take your relationships from, from surviving, surviving to, to thriving. thriving. Bye. Bye. See, See you next week. week.